Hey, everybody, how you doing? It's Jaquetta Williams here, back with another episode, segment rather, of What Has COVID Taught You? Joining me today is such a sweet, dear friend of mine. She has such a kind spirit, and she's funny as hell. She is a mother, she's a wife, she's a director, she's a writer, producer, oh, and she's an actress, too. Please join me in welcoming my friend, Terry J. Vaughn. Hey, Terry! Yay! Hey, (laughs) Jaquetta! Hey, honey bun, you look so fantastic. It's been like a month of Sunday since I've seen you. So you look fantastic. Thank you. I appreciate that. You know, you're welcome. We need to hear that sometimes. <laughs> we all do. Okay, yeah. so the question at hand is what has COVID taught you, love? Oh, Lord Jesus. Jeez. <laughs> uh, you know, that's, I, was, I couldn't sleep last night thinking about this question. I'm such a weirdo. Yeah, I'm such a weirdo. So, uh, so it taught me a couple of things. Let's see. It taught me um, actually just how to enjoy doing nothing. Mm. Which very hard for me to do. Just enjoy doing nothing. Like we couldn't go anywhere. We couldn't do anything. I realized I really love hanging out with my kids. <laughs> I love having them home. I was like, no, don't go to school. I'm so bad. I'm bad, bad parent. Um, But I did love that. I learned (laughs) that I really enjoy cocktails every night. But then, you know, on a more serious note, I did learn, it made me um, learn more just about Black history, like real African history. I started studying more. There are so many things that I did not know about our culture, about um, being African, to being African-American. I started listening to Dr. Um, Hendrick Clark, whom now I'm a, he's a, a black historian. So I listened to, to a lot of books, audio books um, by him, watched a lot of speeches and which in turn made me learn more uh, just about me, myself. So I think that was like, that was really the, the big highlight for that time. And it's just sparked so much. It sparked so much. Just learning about our, how, um, how we worshiped as Africans, our spirituality. Um, I did not know that we came up with uh, um, astrology. I learned about that. Um, so I, I learned a lot, actually. Isn't it interesting when you really delve deeply into who you are, where you come from, it makes the lessons that you've learned in high school, middle school, seem like, hmm, it makes you question everything that you've been taught. I oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So, you know, and there's a reason why that was has been purposely done. When I was thinking about my kids and them needing to get back to school, it made me even look at that in a whole different light. Not that I don't want them to go to school for sure, but I also mm-hmm. needed to make sure that we were instilling in them um, our real history because they're not going to learn that in school at all. They they're not going to learn. Will not. Art. No, not mm-hmm. at all. And it made me just really think how, I don't know. I mean, we have all know that this country has so many struggles, but it's, it's so deeply embedded in all of us, not just black people, white people, like what we are being taught as little kids, you know? So it just, that was really eye opening. Let's talk about the industry in which you work, because I know it had to be very difficult, even though you enjoyed being with your kids, your family, your husband and such. But you also have this amazing creative side where you write, you act, you produce. And that in some ways had to be put on hold as well. So, yeah. So right before um, everything shut down for COVID, I was supposed to start directing a movie. So, of course, that was shut down and I wasn't I wasn't mad about it. I really did enjoy that time off because I had been working like back to back to back to back to back. And so it gave me some much needed downtime and quality time with my family, with myself. And then I was really blessed and really fortunate, like in September or something, the movie that I was supposed to direct in March, um, they finally approved it. And we actually shot during COVID. Um, We shot in um, Louisiana and I learned all the protocols of COVID. But I was able to shoot, I've shot three projects 
um, already directed. So I was really, really blessed. So what do you hope at some point, because I think I'm going, I'm changing the narrative about when we get out of COVID, because I think COVID is going to be something that once we get to life as normal, we're mm -hmm. still going to be dealing with it in some form or fashion. Right. So what do you hope that you will sustain once we move back into mm -hmm. our everyday lives? Wow, that's another good question. This is why you're so good. You're so amazing <laughs> at what you do. I love it. I love it. you. Thank you. I just, I just do. Um, because that's a good question. Um, so what do I hope kind of remains in my life when it goes back? Um, um, the learning, still listening, because there's so much still, even though I spent a lot of time listening um, to the books and all the stuff that I share with you, there's still so much more that I don't know. And I want to continue to dive deep into that because I think that, that that is such a powerful thing for us when we learn more about our history, learn more about our contributions to the world. It's empowering for us. It's empowering for me, which means in, it's empowering for my kids because now I'm introducing them and making sure they know all these things. Um, so that is what I I plan to continue to do. Like this, the flame has been lit, so it's that's not going to go out. I'm going to keep doing that. What has your relationship been like with your kids and with your husband since you all, even though you were working, you're still spending, I'm sure, much more time in mm -hmm. one space together? I'm not, I loved it. I'm not gonna lie. It's like I love it. I, I mean, I'm you know, I I love I love my life. I love that I have these two things that I'm super passionate about, which is my career and my my family. It's like mm -hmm. I love spending time with them and being up under them. I don't want to do all the stuff that they want to do. I just like being here with them. Like Lola likes to jump on the trampoline all the time. I can't do that. I'm not, I'm not doing that on these 50 year old knees. I can't do that. <laughs> uh, oh, so, you know, I can't, I, I'm not doing that, but I do, I do love, it was good for me. It was good. And I know like it was an eye opening time for a lot of people in relationships. Yeah. And some oh, yeah. either got stronger or some actually went away because I've heard. Dissolved. Some, yeah. They've, tested, yeah. they've been tested. Yeah. I think we did really well. We actually enjoyed the time. Well, like I said, we were having cocktail hour. We were like, it's four. Let's go. <laughs> cocktail hour. <laughs> do you still do in the bathroom with Terry? I haven't done that. I haven't oh, done that. Really? You know, you know what, what kind of, well, for one thing, I'm trying to do something on a bigger scale with it. So I just kind of felt like, let me calm down on this part of it. But the other thing is when I was doing it and, and during the pandemic, because I was still doing it at the top of the pandemic, there was a time during the pandemic where I got super sad and it wasn't about the pandemic itself. It was all the racial stuff that was going on in our world. And it just, I was just so sad. Floyd stuff and Brianna, it was, it got really heavy because, you know, all of us were, were trying to do our parts and we were all on social media. We were making our voices heard. We kept pumping out their, their names and Black Lives Matter. And we were just in it, in it, in it. And because, you know, everybody has a different calling because we weren't the ones that were out there marching and picketing and, and, and doing the rallies. Everybody wasn't able to do that which I didn't do that. So I felt like it was my responsibility to contribute um, and back and back them up who were out there by using my social media platform, by, you know, just making sure that I kept pouring into them, making sure that, you know, you're, you're seen, you're needed. Thank you for being out there, being a voice. And it was constant because I, I felt like that was my responsibility. So every day, all day, we're on these platforms, listening to the news, responding to stuff, making sure that we don't let let the um, momentum die down. And I felt obligated to do it. So at the top, it was a whole bunch of that. And at some point, it just started to feel so heavy. I'm like, okay, mm -hmm. let me take a break. Mm -hmm. And I did. I like took a break. And I don't think I ever really got back into doing the videos and all that stuff like I had been. Like at first it was fun during the pandemic because it was new for everybody. And I was right. like, yeah, I'm walking around in my my cat, I mean, my um, 
bonnet all day. I'm drinking cocktails, me and my husband. Did. So it was like fun kind of revealing what everybody was doing in their homes because we did. it was like being on recess. But then just the political environment was just very, very heavy. It's just trauma. And we, we as yes. people are constantly yes. trauma and re-traumatized. Yes. And then That's trauma what I felt. Again. Yes. So we have to find a way to escape from the trauma only to be, you know, <laughs> Put right back into it. So I get yep. I get completely what you're saying yep. and what happens with us as a people, as a country, yep. as we move forward. Terry Javon, thank you so much for being a part of What Has COVID Taught You? I appreciate you. I love you. You want to tell me the name of the movie or is that secret secret or? I love you too. No, it's not a secret. But um, so I, and it should be coming out. I actually directed two Christmas movies um, that should be released um, this coming Christmas. One is called Soul Santa. Um, that will be on BET. And the other one was an um, independently shot Christmas movie called Merry Switchmas, which is so cute. It's about these two kids that have never met each other. They've only played video games against each other. So they've only talked virtually. And something goes kinky with their their video games and they end up switching bodies. So they wake up in each other's home. So it's, it's a real fun, like a home alone meets Freaky Friday type of uh -huh. movie. So I'm excited you. about that one too. We will definitely be looking forward to those. Terry Javon, thank you so much, honey. I love you so much. I love you too, Jaquetta. Thank you.